Very good morning to you. I'm Jim Shudo. And I'm Poppy Harlow. We do begin this morning again with new reporting on the president and the U.S. intelligence community. After your remarkable exclusive reporting yesterday, there have been a lot of developments. This, of course, was about that covert operation to remove a Russian informant from Moscow. You have new details this morning. We'll get to those in a moment. But let's just begin uh, with your reporting, Jim, on the president. That's, that's right. A new story we're reporting this morning. Multiple senior officials who served under this president tell CNN that Trump has privately and repeatedly expressed opposition to the use of foreign intelligence from covert sources, including overseas spies who provide the U.S. government with crucial information about hostile countries. In private, the president has said that foreign spies can damage relations with their host countries and undermine his personal relationships with their leaders, the sources said. The president, quote, believes we shouldn't be doing that to each other, one former Trump administration official told CNN. In addition to his fear that such foreign intelligence sources will damage his relationship with foreign leaders, Trump has expressed doubts about the credibility of the information they provide. Another former senior intelligence official told CNN that Trump, quote, believes there are people who are selling out their country. We should note that even in public, Trump has looked down on these foreign assets, as they are known in the intelligence community, responding to reports that the CIA recruited Kim Jong-un's brother as a spy, Remember, this is what the president said. I saw the information about the CIA with respect to his uh, brother or half-brother, and I would tell him that would not happen under my, under my auspices, that's for sure. Trump's skeptical view on foreign informants undermines one of the most essential ways that American intelligence agencies gather information about U.S. adversaries, including analysis of their capabilities and intentions. Intelligence assessments of national security threats all typically depend on a combination of both human and signals intelligence, as well as other sources. This includes assessments about North Korea's expanding nuclear program to terror threats from al-Qaeda and ISIS and the military capabilities of Russia and China. We will add that the CIA declined to comment and the White House also declined to comment to our request for, request for comments on this story. Okay, so on top of this, it's not like it is new that the president's uh, feelings about the intelligence community have been this way, but you've uncovered for just how long the president's attitude about the intelligence community has long been an issue. It has, and, and we've seen these disagreements uh, between a sitting U.S. president sure. and the findings of the intelligence community bubble out into the open repeatedly. You remember very early in his term, he compared the U.S. intelligence agencies to Nazis. Uh, he, he attacked senior intelligence officials, both mm -hmm. current and former, as somehow disloyal to the country. Uh, but, but bigger picture, he's denied or downplayed or questioned intelligence findings on America's most uh, severe national security threats. Sure. Uh, Russian interference in the U.S. election, Iran's compliance with the nuclear deal. Remember, before his withdrawal, yep. U.S. intel agencies, they testified publicly that Iran mm -hmm. was complying. Uh, also, North Korea's continued expansion of its nuclear program, yep. uh, the president downplaying that. Uh, the, the most famous episode was Trump standing next to Vladimir Putin in Helsinki and, in effect, taking his word denying that Russia had interfered in the election, despite the fact that U.S. intelligence has found that uh, very clearly. Most recently, this perhaps uh, very telling, you'll remember the president tweeted out this photo, uh, which uh, appeared to That's be a right. classified photo of an Iranian missile launch site. Uh, these photos, they show U.S. intelligence gathering capabilities, the president putting that out on, on Twitter, uh, and, and just in that larger picture here, you see a president at odds frequently with the intelligence agencies. On top of all of this, since you reported your exclusive 24 hours ago yesterday morning on our show, you have new information about the covert informant. What can you tell us? That's right. I mean, initially, we had these uh, details when we first filed our story yesterday, but withheld them uh, because we didn't want to add to speculation about the person's identity. Since then, another news organization has reported these details in the New York Times, so we're sharing some of them here just to get at the level that this about source how was. High up this how high up was. he was, and therefore how uh, what a loss it is for U.S. intelligence. One, it was someone who served as an informant for more than 10 years, wow. uh, uh, providing important intelligence over time, someone who had risen to the highest levels of Russia's national security infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, including, uh, imagine this, with the ability to take photographs of presidential documents. Uh, imagine what insight that gives you about, uh, about Russian plans and thinking and intentions. And an example of that was that intelligence from this source was essential to the intelligence community's finding on Russian interference in the 2016 election, specifically that it was directed by 
President Vladimir Putin, mm -hmm. and that his intention was not just to dis disrupt U.S. politics, but also to advantage Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. So it's an enormous loss to lose an asset this high. Yeah, and because of those concerns. Exactly. And out of those reasons about the president's handling of exactly. information. Although we should note that, that those concerns about the president's handling of intelligence were part of a, of a bigger picture. Sure. Uh, these concerns started during the Obama administration because that intelligence had been included in the intelligence community's assessment, uh, but they grew during the early months okay. of, the Trump, of the Trump administration. Great reporting, Jim. Stay on it. Thank you, Papio. One of the many stories we'll continue to cover here on this broadcast. Joining me now is Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. He sits on the of Illinois. He sits on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, we always appreciate you taking the time to join yeah. the show. Yeah. So first, if, if I could, I don't want you to get into, you're a serving uh, member of the Armed Forces. I don't want you to uh, get into to classified areas, but I do want to ask your reaction uh, to the bigger picture story here. Uh, one, uh, what loss is this to the U.S., to U.S. national security agencies and in the intelligence community to lose an asset this high uh, in the Russian government. Well, before I comment on the story, there's more I think we need to find out. You know, uh, right now it's anonymous sources. I'm not saying it's an incorrect story, but I'll just speak generally to the issue, which is, uh, look, even our allies spy on us. Uh, I read an article recently that said there's more spies per capita in Washington, D.C. than anywhere in the world. There's probably one 200 yards from me somewhere here. Uh, it's the nature of the business, and we need to spy on especially our enemies. And I, Russia is an enemy. China is an enemy. And, uh, and we need to have assets, both electronic and human surveillance assets, high up in position. So generally speaking, because I don't know enough about this story, generally speaking, I'll say human intelligence is extremely important and in many cases more important than even you know, electronic intelligence in all areas. Right, and we know that uh, intelligence agencies depend on that kind of information as yeah, they absolutely. develop pictures. You, you, you're aware uh, of, of the president's often public battle with intelligence agencies disagreeing or questioning their assessments on a whole host of things. Uh, what damage does that do, not just to, to the intelligence community's work, but just the way America responds to these threats? Yeah, it's not great. I mean, the president has every right to disagree. Uh, typically, that's done in private, right? Uh, you want a president surrounded by people with different opinions. You want a president that actually thinks through this stuff and questions what's told of him. Because you know, uh, even, even the CIA, even intelligence agencies aren't always right. But they're the best we have to find out information that we need to defend the American people and American interests. And so taking any kind of a battle public uh, is always concerning for a couple of reasons. Number one, it does discredit, let's say we find ourselves in a major military conflict, whether with Iran or defending somebody or whatever that is, uh, that'll be based in some cases on intelligence assessments. And now if you discredit, whether in front of the world or in front of the American people, that can have a major impact. It can discourage the intelligence services, but they're still gonna do their job and do it well. I just think these kinds of things are, you know, a lot of people appreciate a president that's transparent. There's some things where it's like maybe not that, we shouldn't be that transparent all the time.